The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Good morning, everybody. I am Joseph Ferrer from WND.com, and uh, we're going to be talking, uh, as billed, uh, very shortly about the lawsuit that you all want to hear about, the lawsuit uh, against Esquire. Uh, but uh, before we get there, I want to uh, bring a couple of people forward to provide some background very important background, I think, uh, to that lawsuit. Uh, there is a very significant development in the very story for which Esquire was ridiculing uh, WND uh, and uh, defaming WND. And so I'd like to introduce, uh, to start, uh, Jerome Corsi, the author of the book, Where's the Birth Certificate? senior staff writer uh, for WND uh, to uh, fill us in on those details. Uh, thanks, Joseph. And I'm the author of uh, Where's the Birth Certificate? This is the um, book that we published uh, on May 17th, and I want to give you some of the background. I think the background here is important in understanding the lawsuit. Uh, when the book came out, prior to it, Joseph and I had been in discussions as to whether or not we wanted to change the title. Well, the title should have been, this is way before it was published. This goes back almost six months to something like uh, ineligible for command on something of that nature. Um, but we decided that basically we wanted to keep the title the same because the issue was could we really force the release of a birth certificate from the White House. And then in early February, I got notified, I have one of my really top intelligence sources in Hawaii uh, told us that a person we've had in the Department of Health in Hawaii who's been a mole to us, giving us information, said that the birth certificate had been forged and was now in the logbook prior to uh, this, the birth certificate didn't exist. When Governor Abercrombie made the search for the long-form birth certificate, he was not able to discover it, just found notations in the file. And Joseph and I went back again and said, well, shall we again change the title of the book? And the argument was, no, we'll keep it exactly at where's the birth certificate, because the birth certificate that's going to be released is likely to be a forged document. And if we can force that, we might suffer some public relations setback. People say, oh, where's the birth certificate? It's here on the White House website. Ha ha. I said, but if they do that, it's in fact not really understanding that that birth certificate needs to be subjected to forensic examination. And if we could force the release of a fraudulent birth certificate, everything changed. And in fact, it did. On April 27th, when President Obama came forward into the press room and said, this is my birth certificate, suddenly the President is now in the chain of evidence. It's no longer possible to say, one of my subordinates or someone not associated with me produced the short form certificate of live birth. I'm not responsible for it. No, you've got now the President of the United States saying, this is my birth certificate. And with the release of that document, the entire future of the Obama presidency depends on the authenticity of the document. And with a year and a half left in the presidency, Senator Joseph, I think we'll be able to have the book established as a bestseller. And the book became a New York Times bestseller, despite the efforts of groups like Esquire to kill the book. And I remain absolutely confident that the reason the Obama administration was forced into the release of this fraudulent birth certificate was to try to prevent the publication of the book. That was a key element, I believe, in the decision to suddenly produce a document that hadn't existed for three and a half years. If this birth certificate existed three and a half years ago instead of 20 minutes ago, why didn't the White House release it? 
when it was first requested in 2008. Instead of having to go through all this discussion and explanation about the Hawaii Department of Health won't get long-form birth certificates released, we have copies of long-form birth certificates released by the Hawaii Department of Health a month before, through the end of March 2011. The issue that the Hawaii Department would not release those documents is a lie. We have proof that they were releasing the documents to people who paid the fee and followed the Hawaii law, which has not yet been changed, that allows people access to their vital records. So when we had the release of this forgered, for, forgery, this, this fraudulent document, everything changed. Now, in fact, you've got a document the president is responsible for, one that needs to be in, have, undergo a forensic examination to determine if, it, if it's a forgery or not. And just from the prima facie looking at it, you'd say, well, if the White House was really determined to convince the American public that the long-form birth certificate was legitimate, any court in the world would have demanded the best evidence of the document, which is the document itself. And the original long-form birth certificate, if it exists, has not been released by the Hawaii Department of Health. It's still being covered up. It's still being held in the vault. It's still being shown to no one. We have no corroboration from the Kapiolani Hospital of the patient records of Ann Dunham. We have no confirmation from the patient records of Dr. Sinclair that he actually delivered the baby. All of these records, again, remain under seal as part of a continuing cover-up. And if you read Where's the Birth Certificate, as I think now thousands of Americans are, the book documents and demonstrates, first of all, there are more eligibility questions that have not been examined than just where Obama was born. Obama was born on the steps of the White House. His father was Kenyan, which means at birth Obama was a dual citizen of the Commonwealth of Great Britain and of the United States, with Kenya having been a Commonwealth country. A dual citizen is not in the definition of a natural born citizen, which I think gets supporting evidence from the continuing the Senate resolution to uh, 511 that was passed for John McCain, which specified McCain had two U.S. citizen parents at birth. Barack Obama co-sponsored that resolution and knew he could not meet its criteria did not submit, Barack Obama did not submit his birth credentials to the Senate for an equal examination. In fact, of the 125 exhibits in this book, the second from last is a Congressional Research Service report that documents Obama never submitted his birth credentials to any government agency. It's a loophole in the Constitution. Constitution Article 2, Section 1 requires a president to be a natural born citizen, but yet the Constitution does not empower any group or institution of government to be responsible for checking birth credentials of presidential candidates. And a major argument in this book is not only that we lack more documents on President Obama than any other modern president. We don't have his education records. We don't even have his grades going back to kindergarten. Or whether he's registered in any of these schools as a foreign student. We don't have from Barack Obama whether or not Barack Obama was adopted in Indonesia or functioned as a dual citizen in Indonesia. His mother's passport records and Dunham indicate that she removed Barack Obama from her passport and said Barack Obama soy barca. School records say Barack Obama is registered as Barry Satoro. Under all these examinations, I think what we find is that the book has presented arguments which have remained valid and have become a bestseller despite the efforts to kill the book. And a critical argument of the ridicule, a critical argument that Esquire was advancing, was that the book 
you know, was saying, oh, well, now World Net Daily has doubled down, saying it's a forgery. And I think that's where we want today to begin, which is the evidence that, in fact, the birth certificate released by Barack Obama, a PDF electronic file, and then some Xerox copies is a forgery. To advance that argument, we've been publishing a series of analyses in World Net Daily, and we have today with us an expert, Mara Zebest. Mara has authored or been contributing editor, managing editor on over a hundred books dealing with Adobe and Microsoft software. And with that, Mara is going to take us through the analysis of her study, which has been published in World Net Daily. It's available today. And uh, Mara will give us the main points of her conclusion uh, that the document is a forged document. Mara? The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.